Hey, Carol. Hello. I'm so glad to be here in my own room. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to go out in the rain. No, I don't know. The provider, I, get, I called them up and they said, oh, there's something wrong and we know we're working on it. So Man, I guess I they didn't. They didn't take so long that I had to go out. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, I've had the the cable folks at my house like at least twice in the past. Like I, it's it always goes down in the worst possible moments. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Uh. But. Erica is here twice. I was going to say, I've got dual Erica's here. I love it. <laughs> you might have two windows open there. Yeah, you do have two <laughs> windows open there. It, and you got to turn your volume up. There you go. And you're, well, you're muted, or at least you were. Let's see if I can are. unmute her. Can I unmute Erica? I'm sure she'll get here. <laughs> she might be trying to do audio in her phone and. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I sent you, I don't know if you got to see it, but I sent you some stuff from the minute. I haven't looked at it yet, but. That's fine. No. Just so you know, it's there. Thank you. Speak, Erica. Well, this is the strangest thing. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I don't know why there are two of me. <laughs> what if I just take, can I just take one of you out? Yeah, just take uh, one of me out when you come back. Move. What happens? <laughs> All right. Don't do anything right now. I'm just going to remove you, that the, the okay. blank one. And if it... Um, Hopefully it doesn't screw up anything with your current thing. All right. Okay. Oh, good, good, good. There you go. What happened, what happened was is that um, I logged in and then it disappeared and it says reload. So I think I hit reload and it came twice. <laughs> Got it. All right. Thank Sir. Hey, Rob. Hello. Welcome. Good morning. It's still morning, I think. Yep, 11 o'clock. Oh, no. Huh. I worked on the goals, and now I can't find them. Huh. Me, um, I can. You have whatever it is that came out of our last trust meeting, Greg. Yes. The, so the document I sent out a couple of days ago had that. Erica, can I um, resend that to you? Oh no, I have them. I was working on them. <laughs> oh, you were doing some some separate from. Um... Yes. Yes, that I was going to suggest today, and now I can't. It says it won't open. Oh, oh no. Oh, um, let me go see if I can find my. Do you want me to um for, for, for those to you, Carol? What? what, what can, um, can I... Yeah, sure. That's fine. I probably have it somewhere. I'm... Yeah, I mean, I, or if if you have your email open, I I, I sent an email uh, on Tuesday at uh twelve oh four p.m. Tuesday was the fourteenth, right? Yes. Yes. And, and it I, would be an atta attachment, or it's it, in should, the... it would be in an attachment um, with an so it's 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 a uh, an agenda which also has the goals. Huh. Or I can just I'll, I, should I just reward it to you? That's fine. Yeah, uh, it's you know, quicker okay, sure. since I'm not finding it. <laughs> All good. And it. Hey, oh. you're silly. Hi, Shelly. Hi. Good morning. 
So what I missed, is Greg going to share screen? Um, I was sure I can. Would that, would that be helpful? Um, I don't know if I have the specific sure. question that you sent out to. Yeah, I mean, I, really, it's just the, the the agenda is just a container, like, you know, as generic as possible. So it's just the goals and the notes from the, our last small meeting. But we, we're a meeting away from that now. So. Well, Push so today, today we're going to start digging into strategies, right? I think oh, so. Oh, that. I'm sorry, Greg. I had that. I was looking for the most recent version of the doc, the, you know, our goals thing. Scroll down. I think it's the second page of that document I just forwarded. Oh, okay. There's a page two. It's short enough at the beginning. I didn't even look for page two. But, but like, Greg, if you could. There we go. If you could sure. as a Word doc and then as we're talking, actually sure. type in. The... Sure. All right. As long as you'll all uh, forgive my. Um, uh, funny typing. I have a goofy. I'm a bad typist to begin with, and I have a goofy uh hand right now. So, with that okay. said, I'm, ha I'm happy to type. Or you can send it to me, and I'll do it. No, I can do it. It's all right. You you, you can go once, once you go ahead and drive, and I'll 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 try and. Okay, and then if you can make it much bigger. Yeah, yeah, sir. I'm just looking at. Right. Yeah, and just look at one page at a time because yep. we'll yep. never possibly. Okay. How's that? Okay. Can you see that okay? I'm bigger. Bigger. Even bigger. Okay. Hold on. Down below. Keep it. going. <laughs> is it is it, it what what are you all seeing right now? Is it taking up most of the Your page? Whole screen. I like oh, it only takes up part of this what I'm looking at. I think at. I think maybe I was sharing the wrong way. Because that was per share. Same as uh, it looked before. It looks small, I know. Well, just just make the percentage bigger at the bottom. I mean, I've got it about two hundred percent now. Okay. Yeah, it, but it, because we're not just looking at the document, we're looking at a whole giant screen, and so part of it has nothing on it. So, okay, that's we're getting there. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to see the whole thing, but I, I can keep. I guess it's just the aspect ratio of my monitor. I think is the. Can okay. You... I'm pretty much read that. Okay. So do we want to start with the first one? Just start with development? Yep. Yep. So the creation of 200 homes, affordable people earning below 100% AMI over the next five years. <clears throat> so what are your thoughts? I had some thoughts, um, and this is just brainstorming. So I'm going to... Um, so the, the second B, seek a land donation for affordable housing development from UMass, I put and or Amherst College and Hampshire College, because I think, um, you know, Amherst College actually had mentioned a year ago that they had property. And I know Paul has had conversations with them, but I think, you know, since we have three colleges, why not also include the other two? Agree. Yep. Um and then I just, this again, just is just brainstorming that I, I mm -hmm. do this morning. Um, one was, uh, and, and it may not be uh, specific enough, work with the planning board to track inclusionary zoning projects and ensure affordable units identified, marketed, and occupied. Uh, again, just brainstorming. Um, leverage or specifically designate trust funds to see the development of affordable housing for those 30% AMI, 60% uh, percent AMI and 80 percent AMI and then the question is do we want to then separate for home ownership and rental and then another one um it's sorry you, I'm, I'm sorry could you say it again I, You're I was going to yeah yeah oh, sure, sure, sure sure so uh maybe thinking about leveraging or specifying the tr the use of trust funds to see development for affordable housing for those separating because we had talked about 30 percent AMI 60% AMI and 80% AMI. So maybe being specific about that. And then possibly if we wanted to talk about home ownership or rentals as part of that. And then another one would be maybe thinking about targeting, um, working with developers, actively engaged developers and identifying land for development of affordable housing. And then the last one was more around the type of housing. 
develop designs for ADUs or tiny homes with the approval of the planning board, and then thinking about possibly co-housing developments. So that was just the sort of different areas I thought about um, as I was brainstorming. Okay, so with the first possible strategy, do people feel comfortable with the idea of the trust working to identify two municipal parcels for disposable affordable housing? Does that make sense? Or yeah, I'm fine. is that okay? I don't know. I, I feel like maybe there'll be municipal par parcels and maybe there'll just be parcels that are in town that seem, uh, I don't think they have to be municipal because I don't know how many things the town owns it i don't really care whether it was a municipal parcel the whole bought the whole uh belcher town road thing was that the town saw something that they thought they could buy and we could buy together and i would like that kind of thing to be possible here so it seems too limited to say municipal so would people feel comfortable keeping it but just modifying that language <laughs> yeah, yeah can, I, can i ask a, a a process question, Shelly, just, you know, so are we kind of making up a big list here and then we'll narrow down or, or right. so it, in which case I'd say yes. I mean, but although I, maybe Carol, bouncing off what Carol said, we're talking about municipal, like disposition is one way the town can participate. Mm -hmm. But also, just acquisition is another way, right? Or so maybe the the concept is municipal participation, which is a little broader, and would be inclusive of acquisition and um, disposition. So I guess in terms of process, yeah, I I was um, when Carol started. I mean, um, Erica started listing off. Then I started wondering how. Okay, how are we going to go through this? So. Um, I guess we can start with, do other people have other areas, other ideas that would fit under this? So maybe we could do that first as to, to piggyback on what Eric is doing and then maybe go back to the top. Does that make sense? Do other people okay. have other ideas that are not yet under development here that you want to throw out for us to consider? Um. Wow. I don't, I think... I think I definitely want there to be some things that specifically name home ownership in some way here. <clears throat> I don't know where it goes or what, but home ownership seems like a very important thing for a lot of reasons that, that's, that so I, would, I don't want all of our stuff to end up to be rental. So somehow worked into here has to be that <clears throat> part of it is home ownership opportunities and, um, yeah. And I would like to see us work to, maybe it's said somewhere, let me see, I couldn't even, work with developers, leverage, land trust funding, co -ho one of the things that maybe Erica said, and or I invented Erica having said, was work with the planning department to create more, uh, easier access to more kinds of housing. Like like duplexes, for instance, that that it could be easier to develop things that are difficult to develop in Amherst right now that that could have some affordability attack, whatever that and expanding the kinds of housing that can be created. Maybe that wouldn't necessarily be about affordable housing, but anyway, it's another realm that interests me. Okay. So kind of around policy and zoning. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. So the one thing is <clears throat> just remind that that those may or may not drive affordable housing. It may just be more housing. So we want to keep that in mind in terms of the primary work and the, the purpose of the trust. Right. I'm just putting that out there. The same thing with ADUs, unless you're really going to require restrictions on ADUs, you just want to keep in mind of how much effort you put into things that aren't directly affordable housing. Okay. Any, <laughs> any other any other ideas here that strategies in my support development? 
Um, so this co sort of goes along with what Carol was saying. I, I think, so, so there's been a long um, thought process discussion about how to use all of those parcels that are in the, um, what we call our general residence zone, the neighborhoods that, that surround downtown where it's the highest density housing that that's not part of a, of a town center neighborhoods, highest density neighborhoods. But there's a lot of, um, so, so most of those lots are non-conforming. They're, they're, when zoning was imposed, suddenly all the, all the lots are non-conforming because they're, they don't have enough frontage or they don't have enough area or something. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of vacant lots around that you can't build anything on. Mm -hmm. Even though if you built something on, it would, it would you know fit right into the neighborhood. So what? And but people don't want to change that because they're happy having this this vacant lot next to their house, um, or across the street or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to oh. one way to break that logjam maybe is to make those lots available for affordable housing development for a small house. Cool, mm -hmm. it's affordable. Um, then, then you get infill, and it's affordable. Affordable. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, that is great, and, Rob. And and to clarify, these are mostly probably privately held. Yeah, for, in, in large part. Um, um, right. Yeah, I mean, I um, I had I don't know. I was I was ideating last night, uh, and looking at different stuff and I, I started looking at revolving loan stuff and I don't think I'm not, I'm not sure that's 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 the trust but I I thought about I was I've been thinking a lot about you know I think uh, some folks might be familiar with it. there's a couple proposals right now you know in downtowny areas to, to, to you know to convert single family house one one I think is to convert a single family house into a duplex and another is to build uh um, another house on a I think it's the same lot, you know, you know, to make a couple, you know, and a lot of pushback. I find myself wondering, you know, is there a way, would there be a way to, and, and the pushback as, as it always is in Amherst is, is because people are concerned about, you know, about college users of, of apartments, um, student users of, you know, residents of apartments. Um, maybe an interesting thing to do would be to find a way to offer some discount financing in exchange for um, for affordable development, you know, uh, uh, on those, and and, and I, I that might be an, an, another strategy to activate some of those non-conforming lots, you know, is to you know maybe play a role in financing um, uh, as opposed to direct like capital investment, you know, some sort of revolving function or whatever. I'll throw that out in there. But yeah, I mean, tar but, but just in general, though, Rob, I think just like targeting it, maybe finding a way to target funds in some fashion toward underutilized lots might be an interesting mm -hmm. thing. And I guess just in general, I'm thinking about, um, and this gets to the duplex point and, and yeah, there is the zoning question to, or the uh, sort of, I think we do have to drill through the layer of how does this relate to affordability, you know, but I'd like to touch on ecosystem in some way in this, right? And if there were a way, even in a very modest sort of first swing in the strategy to incentivize the entrance of more players into affordability fo focused development, you know, that I think would be a win. Um, and that this, you know, some of the stuff might begin to get at that. So these are a lot of different strategies. I'm wondering if you're ready to start digging into them because you don't want to over you don't want to overwhelm the trust with so many strategies. <laughs> so if we can go back to the top and this idea of trying to find <clears throat> trying to identify a couple different parcels. So if to Carol's point, 
we could just identify two parcels. We would phrase it like differently. I mean, it wouldn't be disposed necessarily. Um, two parcels to um, it'd be less strong, like to consider for affordable housing or identify two parcels for affordable housing development. Um, in collaboration with the town? In collaboration with the town. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to have something that can, that, that sort of affirms our collaboration with the town because uh, the town sometimes tends to work without us <laughs> and will ask to be informed. <laughs> Even though we have Paul on our <laughs> uh, on our trust, so um, I think it's really important that we maintain that that strong link with the town. And we can come back and make language flowery, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So identify two parcels in collaboration with the town for the creation of affordable housing development. Okay. So we'll take off possible strategy and make that strategy. And then do others like the idea of seeking a donation of land from one to all the universities in town, but that that be a strategy it may not be one of our strongest strategies. <laughs> I mean, like the most probable? It may not be the most probable? Yeah, it might not be one of the most, uh, you know. Yeah, it's... it sort of seems like it's it's part of, of A, because if if um, if as Amherst 20th Lane, it's going to be because the town um, worked to acquire it. So, so that's... I would put it, uh, so... Maybe, except that one of the scenarios, you know, is like there's a scenario where we could encourage Amherst College to deploy some land, but it might not ever actually route through the town or the trust. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like like there's a scenario where it could go right to one of our partner developers, you know, and then. Mm -hmm. Probably there'd have to be some sort of like way to make. I, I'm not quite sure how like how that would go from Ed Lands to you know wh whether it would just get developed on educational land or if the education or uh, there's a zoning district for that, um, which is notable because we have very little control over that district. But um, I don't know if it would just be get built right there or or get donated and then rezoned and then built or whatever. But um, that is one one track it could take. Um, so the way it's written now, where it's well, a land donation, it's that's not specifically. I mean, you could interpret it as that the trust wants it, but also it could be that the trust is helping to just advocate, encourage a donation to Valley or to someone else. To Greg's point, like I, I think that that's that might be more. So asking one of them to take the lead and the trust to supporting, like that may be a more reasonable role i don't still quite see why that isn't just included in the first one actually all the first one says is in collaboration with the town we're going to find some place to build affordable housing and if it comes through a school or if it comes through someplace else so what i mean it's all well the first one's more like that you would do the what's the what's the development that you just brought up recently earlier in this meeting that you built your town road thing. right you yeah. actually acquired it and then you're disposing of it so that's what kind of one is a is whereas b is more specifically one of the universities donating to the point of just all the impact of the universities on the community and really trying to get the communities to, the universities to step up a bit okay well i um hmm. I don't know. Okay. I just, maybe it doesn't happen to have to happen by land donation. I think what Greg and who knows how it will happen if the university agrees to work with, because we talked to them, Amherst College agrees to work with this, develop to work with Valley CDC, develop some affordable units on the piece of property that they hold. And I don't know, then it's still, if we were involved in it, it doesn't necessarily i don't think have to be a land donation but 
maybe I'm wrong. I don't know that much about how it all works, frankly. So, um, I think I I think I'm echoing Shelly here. I I see them as different because a suggest okay. the ta the town is is putting town resources into it in some way either we're taking land that we currently own which could we could sell right you know uh and and we're deploying it for housing or the town is using town funds to acquire you know that's kind of a, a bit more Okay, I'm. That's okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. ver, ver, versus asking institutional partners to you know to to play a role. Now, in in, in practice, both are good, and you know, it, I don't think one has to be exclusive of the other at all or anything. You know, but um, they they all feed toward the goal of two hundred homes, and you know, if if the class if the, if the path seemed way more productive to go the, you know, the Amherst College donation route and to focus on that. I think we would do that, you know, um, but, but hopefully we could do both. So I guess maybe, maybe then the question is, do we want to, do, do we want to hold, you know, challenge the town to play an active role in identifying two parcels and then a third, and then this would be a third essentially from an institutional partner. That's fine. Yes. And in five years, yes. Um, and, and I just want to point out when it says seek, that means that we trust members are going to be working towards doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that may, you know, maybe, um, you know, meeting with people there or trying to meet, you know, with advocates, uh, like, you know, the trust, their own boards, you know, we're doing something. So this one really says we're going to be doing something in the next five years to try to get something from these three colleges or from one of the three colleges or maybe one from each of the colleges. So it's it's the seeking. Uh, we may be successful, we may not be, but we're seeking. We're going to be actively doing that. So that that strategy says we're going to be doing that work. Would Would you prefer the word advocate for? Um, either way, I, I think seeking is fine. Um, I really think we should be seeking. <laughs> I think we should be shaming them. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's negative, but <laughs> I think that's advocating. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's more the more specific. Okay. So we can we can come back and and wordsmith, but I. Uh, yeah. Um, so I, I thought Carol was saying earlier that um, it's the land donation part that is tricky because we're actually saying they don't need to donate land, but if they're willing to have an affordable development built on the land by somebody else, that's fine. They still own the land, whatever. So so maybe land donation is um, advocate for the development of affordable housing on institutional property or something. Maybe to... Do you mean that they would potentially do a, a land lease to a developer versus right running the land? Something yeah. like that, yeah. How about deployment? Deployment? Could, I mean, it, 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 that could include donation. That could include a ground lease. That could include, like... Why can't it just say seek or advocate for affordable land. housing development from... Well, who cares? I mean, it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, but I think that that's kind of suggesting that they would pay for it. And that's not the idea is more that they would, that they would provide the land. The land I mean, yeah. technically, they okay. have land lease. I think the question is, would a university want to have a land lease on affordable housing? And I don't think that they would want to do that. I don't think they'd want that role. I think that it's cleaner to expect them just to dispose of the land to sell it. Or to give it, not not to sell, but to donate it. Well, what if you just said for use of land, for use of their land somewhere? Sure, I, it, I, could, I, it could be yeah. it could be a donation. It could be a it could be something that we haven't even thought of yet. I don't know. Probably other people than me have thought of it, so maybe I'm being silly, but. So why don't I make a note to talk with my supervisor who does this housing development work, technical assistance, to ask her what her thoughts are. And That's good. 
legal perspective or what makes the most sense? I'll ask her. Yeah. Some years ago, Hampshire College was going to build a housing development across across West Street. Uh, I don't remember whatever happened to that. I don't think it was necessarily going to be affordable, but it could have been an affordable element. Does that count? Mm, Would the university no. use it? Because it's probably then only for their students. Their students or teachers, right? No, I think it was for it was for staff and alumni is that what I think it was going to be targeted. But my point is that it's not it's not open to the right but from a fair housing perspective, like right. Yeah, I mean you all I guess you all minus Shelly, probably some of you maybe have more of a sense of where Hampshire is. Uh, is, is anybody familiar with what what the story over there is? Not me. Right now? Uh, the, for, for, In terms for, of their survival? Yeah. I think um, they're recovering. I think, I think they're... I think so, too. That's my yeah. understanding. I mean, I... To, to 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 be honest, I, I that I mean, Shelley, the background is there. There was a minute a, a couple of years ago, I, I don't know, fairly recently, where like I don't know where the president of Hampshire announced they were closing, <laughs> and like, and everybody lost, and, and and it was very out of it was very out of the blue, and I I you know I sort of you know, but in any case, like an institution like that when it's in flux, people like us should be paying close attention. To real estate choices, you know. Um, uh, so, you know, well, Ken, Burn, Ken Burns definitely helped turn that around. Um, okay. But I think they're they're much more on solid ground. Okay. Um, but if they weren't, maybe they might want to sell a parcel of land. <laughs> well, so it might be harder to get a donation from them if they're in financial. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why a secret advocate for use. You know, it could be a donation. Maybe it could be at a lower below market rate. You know, who knows? They can write it off on their taxes. I mean, and or they, they don't pay taxes, right? Yeah, I mean, they have a proposed, I'm pretty sure they still own the lands. Is it West Street? Uh, I don't know all the streets down there yet, but they had a proposed, I think Archipelago had a proposal down there, I think on behalf of Hampshire College, right? And which was near Atkins, um, but that, that was... Uh, sort of problematic like footprint wise and I, I you know um but yeah so i mean I, I think just in general without getting into the weeds i guess the to me this is just not you know, I, there's an outcome here but i think the the necessary sort of relationship building and um you know is strategically valuable, even if the outcome isn't, you know, um, Hampshire doing it. Because I think it, it, over, over time, there, there might be creative ways to to partner with them that could be a clean, here's a chunk of land, go build a tax credit project, or it could be a deeper, you know, thing. Okay, so it could just go read as you're talking more. It could maybe it's just simple like seek land from a local university, parentheses, put the three for affordable housing development. So it's not so specific around sale or donation or discounted or whatever, but it's just that the idea is to get land from a university in one way or another. Yeah. Okay. That 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 makes sense to me. Man, what is going on with my computer here? This thing is on. All right. Um, but is it is it technically Amherst and Hampshire College? Yeah. The colleges. How about educational institution? <laughs> uh... Uh, you could list them somewhere. Okay, yeah, we let's 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 not let's come back and do the wordsmith it. We got the idea right. Yeah, we yeah, got we the got word the idea. Smithing. <clears throat> I sent you uh, all of you a copy of the Gazette article that does talk about mixed use, and it is on behalf of Hampshire College, which I did not know. 
um, and it includes a uh, possibility of housing, but at this point it's on hold. Okay. Okay, so first two strategies. Now the C is around, oh, my C is that it's around differing AMIs. So wanting some, some clarity or some language around meeting different area median incomes. Yeah, I just wanted to sort of respect um, Grover's raising our possibility of uh, identifying support for different levels of AMI. Um, and I don't know if that's too much of a restriction on us, um, but, you know, it's, um, I just thought it'd be important to at least raise it. You know, did, did we, it's a question, did we want to designate a certain percentage for those, you know, 30% uh, AMI, 60% AMI? I mean, I, you know, when maybe the focus is much more on um, that we get, a, that we're involved in the RFR, um, because that's what we did with Belchertown Road and um, with, uh, you know, Southeast Street. We, we were very clear about the percentage of AMI apartments that we wanted. Um, but do we need that for home ownership? You know, in home ownership, we haven't really done much except work with, you know, with the Amherst uh, Community Land Trust that asked us for a specific amount for their last mile. Um, and, you know, Ball Lane, um, they just asked us for an amount. Um, so that was why I put it out there as a, as a thought. Well, maybe there is something that could be very I could see of the, or something like, uh, seek that the 200 units contains a mix of housing available for people at 30, 50, 80, and 100% of AMI and, and specify some percents in there if you want. But I would think you just talk about the whole 200 units and not which kind they are or whatever, but that they shouldn't all be for a hundred percent, basically. So there should be a mix of of uh people served in terms of of AMI. And and so you could say a mix of housing for those at 30, at 50, at 80, and at 100 percent of AMI. And say percentages if you want. I don't know, I don't know how to pick them. So I would just say. I'd like to see a mix and I don't know what the percents would be. If somebody has a better idea of the percents, that's cool. So I, I actually just, I'm not sure that that fits in strategies. I think it's kind of more like in guidelines, which I'm hoping that we get to trust guidelines for you that would outline some priorities and how you would weight applications. And and so like, for example, I'm oh. with Lynn and they have a, a strong value to be um, supporting housing, affordable housing that's affordable up to for households earning 50% AMI and below. So they're really trying to make the, um, really elevating that as something that they will um, give weight to for developments that include deeply affordable housing. What I think could fit under our priority is, wasn't it Valley that was trying to do supportive housing or one of the CDCs, weren't they doing a supportive housing at one point, which was going to have deep deep affordability. Yeah, the Northampton Road. Um, right. Northampton Maybe Road does. So I think it'd be a strategy would be more around. Um, is there another effort to do deeply affordable housing in town where the trust could the strategy could be supporting that development, or is there someone who's a developer that's trying to do um, enhanced um, single room occupancy or, or anything? Yeah, yeah. So, so we have, um, we are early in a project um, to do a shelter plus, um, I, I mean, it is loosely envisioned right now as a shelter plus a, a permanent supportive housing, um, you know, uh, following the model that's out there right now. Um, um, so that's, um, that's definitely on folks radar and there's land for that and, you know, an initial process. So yeah, we could say, I mean, I think that would be a, 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 a valid strategy here is to, you know, to elevate that and say, um, 
Well, except it's, you know, I'd hate, I don't know, I'm kind of torn on. Vesting us in that specific project. So I'm not sure what you're actually saying, Greg. Sorry. So <laughs> Sorry. I think Shelly, Shelly was asking if there was if there were any projects out there that were specifically focused on uh, thirty percent AMI, deeply affordable. Um, and the answer is yes. At, you know, right now, as is in a very initial way, we have we have envisioned shelter plus permanent supportive housing. Um, at the VFW site, and that would equate to deeply affordable, you know, thirty percent uh, type units. Um, but I think in, in doing some initial work on that, I think we need to find out if it's viable and if that's the best place. If, if, if indeed that specific place is the best spot to do a combo, it's conceivable this short-term contract we have doing some visioning around that could come out and say, Hey, you know what, really we should do a shelter and a housing resource center there and put some permanent supportive housing elsewhere, you know? Um, but uh, that, that doesn't affect us having a goal, does it? I mean, if we well, have it, a goal that is met perhaps by that, but if it isn't, so then we have to meet it some other way. I, don't, I mean, I guess, but, still not sure. But I think Shelly was asking, is there a specific project out there that we can oh. name here? Um, the point I'm trying to make is that the idea of uh, that, AM, different AMIs that you want to meet, that that's bigger than the goals, that that comes first, that should inform the goals, but it's not actually a strategy to meet the goals. So wh what I'm hoping is that we'll end up doing guidelines and that you'll identify some kind of key values of the trust. And that would be that you want um, the two, you want, um, you want to support developments that have a mix of income that meet a mix of income, um, household incomes, but those should be the bigger values that inform this. So then if that is one of our values that we have a, a variety of, and I think that a particular concern of Grover's was deeper affordability as well. So then I was trying to come up with a strategy that could be getting at that. And one is if there is a, a development on the table about supportive housing that the trust support that, or there could be a strategy um, of like identify or support a supportive housing development. Or I mean, it could be, but it's speaking to this value of wanting to make sure that you're not just funding 80% of AMI or 100% of AMI. So th this might be a guidelines and a thing too, Shelley, but w what if we just said, you know, we'll endeavor, I'll just say half, you know, as a starting point, for conversation like we'll, we'll endeavor that half of our our efforts and our our funds will support homes you know below 60 percent ami i thought i'm now completely confused because shelly i thought you were saying don't try to put these into into the um into these things here, into the goals and the whatever these are strategies, but put it into the guidelines. So any any project that you look at that you're working on, you have these overarching or or the goals like that we used that informed when we tried to develop the RFR for that other place that we were working on. Like the those goals of managing to have it be deeply affordable came into play then not but not here so now i think you're asking us for a strategy and i'm just confused but to me what i would what i would have i would change the goal if we wanted to specify ami uh, how many should be at a certain ami so to me i would say support the creation of 200 homes to people earning below 100 percent with 25 percent or whatever at below 50 percent. like I, I think that that's more of a goal and not a strategy. I know this is getting so, um, maybe it's, uh, if you see it differently, please, please say, but I, I just don't think it's really a strategy to say that you want a certain number of units at a certain, I think that's more of a goal, which is, why we, now, which is why we have it in the goal now of below hundred percent AMI that's goal level. So if we want to say a specific percentage at a certain AMI, then I think that should be goal level. Or you just create strategies that reflect 
different AMIs, which is what I was getting to of the, if there's a supportive, oh, okay. if there's a supportive housing development that that is getting to different AMIs that your strategies are going to reflect different AMIs intentionally support different AMIs. So we almost might have a strategy for 30. I mean, potentially a strategy for, for ELI at 30% AMI, a strategy for 50, 60, you know, I mean, you don't have to, but it could in terms yeah. of need to respect some of Grover, particularly Grover sensitivities. Um, it, that might resonate to her that we're calling out that the trust is going to support is going to fund or, or support mm -hmm. supportive housing. I, I don't think it's necessary, but I, I think it's, um, I, th I don't know that supportive housing is the only kind of housing that somebody wants if they're at a low, I mean, some people just want a place to live. Yeah. So those two things are not exactly the same to me. So there's, so the, the practical side of this, there, there's kind of, you know, is that in a sense, we don't have a huge amount of control over over AMI targets that we're going to end up getting in that the tax credit deals are very formulaic, right? Um, you know, and the 30% stuff, like the permanent supportive housing that we, we we're, you know, we're, we've been talking about, that's going to be very predicated on our ability to get vouchers from the state, uh, you know, as my understanding is that the ability, you know, the ability to, to get those ELI units is is very tied to like specific vouchers tied to those units. Shelly, does this sound correct to you? Like, you, you know, and, and I don't know if you have a take either way. Um, so like being too prescriptive, we, we, we could just match the tax credit number, you know, but being overly prescriptive doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But at the same time, I do think, I do appreciate Grover's input on, you know, uh, uh, something durable that will outlast, you know, most of us, maybe all of us, you know, um, as, as a, you know, within this plan and maybe beyond this plan, you know, I think it is important to name, you know, that we, we want to serve people that are, you know, below moderate income, um, uh, not, not necessarily exclusively, but that they, that we have, we should name it somewhere. So maybe it, it should go up in the goal level, you know? Well, I just emailed mm. you. because It's not letting me do a chat here. So oh, God, I'm sorry. I emailed you. No, it's okay. I emailed you just how we're, I'm working with Lynn. And so we're working on their trust guidelines. And so they created their, this is draft. So it hasn't gone through their trust board yet but some friending priorities. So it's kind of laying out their values. So this is what, I, so this is bigger than the goals. So just as a talking point. So one is to maximize the number of affordable units created by supporting developments that leverage local, state, federal, create new homes affordable to household earning 50% AMI or below. Um, and then D, which I think you might find interesting, invest in developments that support neighborhood integration, breaking down historic patterns of racial segregation. So these are these are what they're putting in their guidelines. Again, this is draft. It hasn't gone through the, they haven't voted on it. It hasn't been fully accepted. But so this is in the guidelines. So this is bigger than goals. This informs goals. It also is in the guidelines. It's for developers, anyone that would apply for their funds so that they can know what the trust is interested in. And then some of this will be reflected in their um, um, in their um, selection criteria that we're creating as well. They already have it. We're, we're modifying it a little bit. So, yeah, that's where I thought you were saying it would show up. Was when we, here is here's the project. Here are the things we want to see. Is something like just what you just said? Maybe not exactly that, but yeah. So that's to me bigger yeah. than goals, and then the. Um, where it's helping to inform, but I don't think that the strategies necessarily need to get into every bit of this. But you know, your board might 
decide differently. So I think that we should probably move on because we're it's already 1147 and um, try to get through a little bit more of this. And this isn't the end of the conversation. We're just, we're sure. just with initial. Um, That's fine. Can, can I just clarify one one thing? Shelly, so I, I maybe it's just semantics, but I kind of see guidelines as like an implementation tool. So a bit more granular, like the, the term guidelines implies to me, like more of an implementation sort of hands-on thing, but the principles you shared seem more global, you know, like cover page kind of thing, you know, to the whole is, is so the World of Trust guidelines, and I didn't actually start this. Some of the some of the communities did it, and I'm building off of it. Okay. They, it's things like it's basically trying to create one document where it's outlining kind of who the trust is, the work of the trust, how the trust is structured, and some of the values and guidance. So it's things like okay, where you put your mission statement, some roles and responsibilities. Okay, so Those more that, that's all more global then. It's that's not more, implementation. Okay. Like management and operations, powers, funding, affordability targets. So outlining what are you, what AMIs are you targeting um, to have funding priorities, goals and strategies, eligible activities. So like the kinds of things you'll fund, um, funding guidelines, anything that's specific to how you are going to be funding um, project monitoring and reporting, application guidelines, requirements, funding, um, I'm sorry, um, selection criteria. So this, so that someone who's interested oh. in funds, they can go through this and have pretty much an overview of how you function and what they need to know in order to apply. And then okay. we, have that. we have that, but we've never used it. Okay. So maybe we'll revisit that and try to update it and, and use it more. And then it's also really the way that the community should be able to open it and go through it and, and just understand what the trust is about. So um, I'm trying to encourage communities to do trust to do this and to keep it up to date just so that it's, um, and also since you're applying criteria and process the same across the board. And um, so. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that makes more sense. No, thank you. Um, Maybe we need to have a goal that says that we'll update that thing and use it. <laughs> Erica, is, your, is it on your website where I could easily find it? Okay, I'll look for it. Okay. So um, what if we tried, so 1150, what if we tried to go through a few of these other ideas under, under development and see if if we feel like we can come up with a, a strategy that that is doable and can make sense? Um, the D, uh, no, so I, ha I have it as E, market. Yeah, I, I missed something that, that Erica said about marketing inclusionary units. Uh, oh right <laughs> i didn't quite get the whole thing uh okay uh yeah i don't want to keep people from um, i think what i said was work with the planning board to track inclusionary zoning projects ensure affordable units are identified marketed and occupied okay But this may, you know what, this may also go more to, you know, part of wanting to reduce the barriers to creating affordable housing. Well, I don't know if it's, I mean, you're, if, if you're talking about the inclusionary zoning bylaw that already exists, those units come on because the developer had to do them in order to get the project, but there's no uh, as far as I know, there's not much oversight or follow up or anything about them. And so I think this is different than anything else and also really important. So are you, Erica, suggesting that possibly the town come up with a, like in the east, eastern part of the state, we have some regional housing, ser regional housing service offices, services offices, where it's entities that towns contract with to provide services like monitoring like you're, it sounds like you're kind of coming up with, like so, come up with some sort of structure to better monitor affordable units 
Yes, we've talked about that or us are requiring the, I don't know if we can, the people who are creating these developments to ensure that they have something like that. Like with Barry Roberts, they actually hired a staff, not that we expect everybody to hire a staff, but some of them have mm -hmm. used an outside a facility to make sure that those are occupied. But for me, Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, for me, the, the focus was much more working with the planning board. We haven't really worked with the planning board. And we've often, Carol and I have just been sometimes asked just to sign off on things. And then we find out that there are three units coming on board. Um, so I think my focus was much more being proactive, working with the planning board to get us on the same page that, you know, when there is going to be an inclusionary um, zoning project, that we're right from the beginning involved in it so we can help monitor what number of apartments are going to get online, uh, seeing if they actually have a process for marketing. If not, then, you know, getting a process and then um, having them inform us when those, those places are vacant. Mm -hmm. So I think... Yeah, this is sticky. <laughs> you know, there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, uh, I think it's interesting. I wonder, though, if whether or not it belongs in development. I think it might be more of, I mean, what do we end up calling this engagement? I mean, I think under engagement, we talked at our, our bigger meeting about, um, you know, kind of relationship building and, and um you know, working with, you know, doing joint meetings and stuff. And I think, and, and advocacy, you know, and I, and I think sort of within this concept here, part of this, you know, is potentially advocacy for some policy changes or advocacy for more aggressive posture from the town. So I, I don't know. I, I wonder if it's more of an engagement goal than a development goal. Could be because the development is demanded by the zoning regulation. The development happens, and then does that development get used? And that, that's a different question than developing it. I think I think I'm agreeing with Greg. I mean, a specific strategy, you know, which speaks to some of this, which you know, which Nate and I have bounced around a little bit, is trying to find ways to get voucher holders into inclusionary units. Um, that might be more developmenty. I mean, it might be its own goal. <laughs> well, the big yeah. goal is ensure <clears throat> that the affordable housing that technically exists in the town is actually serving its affordable purpose. Right. It's basically that's the goal. It's basically <laughs> monitoring inclusionary units. And it's, so it's inclusionary units. Maybe it's also like, how can we just wrote a letter trying to support better access for public housing to funds to be able to do the things they need to do so their units are filled? There's lots of stuff in the way of having things that are technically on the affordable books actually be serving an affordable bunch of people who need the units. And so that whole, it, it, not just inclusionary zoning, it's kind of everything. So do you think that this is a, a trust role or is it a planning department role? I don't think, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think the planning department is going to do it, but maybe I'm wrong, I hope. <laughs> I think we're going to do it. <laughs> I you are? All right, it. yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. yay. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm mindful of time here. You know, there, there, there's a, a, a complex conversation here, you know, which we don't have time for. But the, um, I mean, I think, and it might, Shelley's right, it might be a goal. I think the question before us is like, is there a better way to do inclusionary, you know? And is there is there programmatic changes in a, in a structural way that, um that might be cleaner and might be, you, you know, and, and that in turn might gra graduate up to a goal level that might actually be more of a trust thing, you know, but I don't think we're there yet. Um, like I think, you know, developing an RHSA might be uh, a trustworthy goal, um, but, you know, or, you know, or, or partnering more 
with developers to, um, you know, to get vouchers in there. Um, because inclusionary zoning is is not under the purview of the trust, it's really more of the planning department, then I just, that's why I'm just questioning whether it's a yeah. trust goal versus something that the trust helps to encourage or advocate for, but but maybe not something that you actually drive. That sounds probably right. I think in the future, if there's a if there's a need to have a kind of a better, more comprehensive kind of monitoring of all affordable units for Amherst, that perhaps that's something that is a goal to kind of drive a, a structure that's like perhaps a regional housing office that provides services, but I, I if it's just primarily inclusionary is the concern, then maybe that's planning department. Does that feel like a starting point, Greg, where it's have the planning department do more of the fleshing out some of that before the trust kind of take it on? Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. But I think, with, but with, 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 and the whole holding myself accountable here, you know, uh, my bigger, you know, I think, more generically, it should fall under engagement and advocacy, i.e., like, you know, we've been getting, you know, nudges from different directions on being more active in this. And I think the trust, you know, it's within the trust's purview to say, like, hey, Greg and Nate, like, let's prioritize this more, you know, but from an advocacy angle, more than a uh, a programmatic one. Does that make sense, Erica? Okay. Okay. So I'll maybe I'll just um, so I can do strike through here because I want to keep this so we can um, put it somewhere else. Yeah. So given that it's now um, eleven fifty nine, um, I am I'm happy to do a little bit more wordsmithing work on this to send out to you tomorrow as a next step if that if you want that, or I don't know if you, anyone else wants to do it or if Greg wants to do it, but I'm I'm happy to do a little bit of that. Um, but so today is the 16th. So you have your trust meeting. Was that last week? Yes, it was last week. Okay. So, so then we have, when is our next meeting? So we meet on one, two. Oh, we don't have, uh, we don't have another one in the calendar. Oh, no, we do. On the Shit. Calendar. Not until the twentieth, June twentieth. Yeah. So we did we skip? That's so far away. So far away. I think because there's um uh, five Thursdays in May. Yeah, yeah, the five Thursdays in May. And then when is it? Does that mean that your next trust meeting is on June thirteenth? Correct. Yes. yes. Yeah. Is there so, a way we could have an extra meeting? I'm wondering if. Could people, was there a reason why we didn't do the 6th, June 6th at 11 o'clock? I just think we took we took this slot, which is the third, uh, whatever we are today, the third Thursday. Oh, I see. I see. Um, Could but, people do the 6th at uh, 11 or is that not feasible? No. no. I can do the 31st. I mean, the 30th. The 30th. Yeah, Could people do the 30th at 11? Yeah. May 30th. Carol Gregg. I can do that. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. So why don't we do that? And um, so we can get these in a shape where we'll be comfortable bring it to the board in June. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and what might be helpful, Shelly, you have a really good perspective, just um, the brainstorming feedback that we just did. I mean, if the things that were that I raised were just more like they may belong on the you know guidelines, they may belong in advocacy. You can just send it back with those comments to us. Okay. Okay. Great. So work on that with the goal of getting it to tomorrow. It might end up needing to be early next week, but I'll, I'll do my very best. And then if so, Greg, you have been scheduling the meetings. It's been under Amherst Zoom. Yeah, I, I can send that a Zoom uh, thing. Um, uh, and these are technically recorded just because we're a public meeting. So, um, well, yes, we have to but, post it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll, um, I can send out a, um, alert and do a zoom meeting. And, yeah. 
Okay, great. And then we said the trust meeting is on the 13th. Yes. So that's the second day of our housing institute. I will try my very best because this is important, but um, just FYI. Shelly, if you can't, um, Carol and I can facilitate it. Greg's great at writing notes. Um, and if Rob wants to help facilitate it, the three of us can, or we can take different parts. Like since they're three different areas, it might be good to have each one of us take one of the goals. <laughs> um, so no worries. A good, a good role for that to be coming from you anyway. Okay, so good. I, it looks like we have uh, some next steps. Great conversation. Cool. Thank you so much, everyone. Right. Great. Thank you. Thank you Shelly, shall I send you this, these, this chicken scratch I have here? Or do you feel like you have? Uh, um, if you um, could send yours, that'd be help, really helpful. Okay. Okay, great. We'll do. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks all. Bye.